Hi, good day. Today from Racing D's garage we have something different than the usual BMW stuff and, and European cars. Today we have rear axle and limited slip differential from Chevy Corvette uh, race car, uh, C5 and C6 model. So it's the same for the both and possibly for the C7 as well. So we got this from Germany, Tick Performance. Uh, they drive it on the Nürburgring and uh, on the similar race tracks so it's quite it's on the quite load under the quite quite big load uh, and we have a task to to repair it and upgrade it for the highest performance on the race track <laughs> Uh, you can come closer to see what what we are dealing with today and uh, uh, the most common problem of, of the this uh, differential is the clutch plates of the limit slip diff as you can see this is the factory uh, clutch stack that we have here is the the main problem and when you take a closer look to this uh, they have uh, uh, friction components glued to the to the base. Base is uh, from some uh, from some steel, of course. But uh, the problem is uh, when you have two component clutch disc. When you uh, thermally process this uh, friction materials uh, to to glue on the base plate, uh, you got weakening of the teeth. Uh, inside so the splines inside are weakened and you got this from uh, heavy load on the racetrack you see uh, the splines how worn they are right here and when you get this you have too much play inside the differential so this is the the biggest problem of this axle of this limited slip differential on the other side we have produced uh, high performance clutch plates on our own and they are well tested on the racetrack under the 1000 horsepower load and such and such, and such. so uh, we are going to disassemble this unit here show you what is inside uh, and install performance clutch pack by racing this so we can start The other half of the housing is over here. And that's the unit inside. That, this is the limited slip diff unit that we need to disassemble. And now we are opening LSD unit to determine the state of the clutch plates and the condition of clutches. To make the cap open with a little bit of help of the hammer. When you do this, please watch out for the bearing. If you're not uh, changing it, then watch out for these surfaces. It's, it's crucial to stay healthy, so don't mess them up with the hammer. This is the inside of the unit
And this is exactly what I was talking about on the beginning of this video. I don't know if you can see it well, but check here the inner splines. They are, they are completely destroyed. Friction surface actually is not so, so damaged as the splines are, but this is really, really big problem. Because if you're going to drive it a little bit more, especially on the track, then the splines, splines will disappear completely and then you have completely open differential. So no limited slip at all. So this is the problem when you put it to the gear on the outer splines, you get this. You see this amount of pre free play that you have. So it's, it's, really, it's really not working. And when you have the free play on the inner splines, uh, then it is most likely that it, they're going to disappear because you have the impulse, not, the, not just the pressure, but impulse. Every gear change is additional, additional impact on the spline. So when you switch to the gear up and the gear down, you have the additional impact, the impulse on the splines and they will be they will be destroyed eventually. So that's it. This is this this needs to be replaced. And on the other side, we have this is a racing diffs friction plate, the clutch plate with inner splines as well. This is the fresh new one. And uh, on the comparison to this factory clutch plate. Uh, we told you that this is uh, additional friction material glued to the to the steel uh, base. Uh, on the other hand, this one uh, has no uh, separate friction material. It's made from the tool steel with the uh, molybdenum ceramic uh, friction coating. So uh, the base itself, including the inner splines as well, is uh, pretty much harder than this. Uh, OEM version, OEM version. So uh, to check how it goes on the splines on the spider gear, and here it is. So you can you can check almost no free play at all. So no no free play on this on this one. And what is important is that compared to OEM clutch plate, this one will last much longer so it's it's much better than than the oil plates we are going to install them now to show you complete the proceed complete procedure and you're ready to go on the track after this moving to this assembly of the rest of the LSD unit you need to take out the central pin uh, to remove the spider gear and the uh, right side of the friction stack, friction plate stack. Second small gear out, this is the central pin. And we have large spider gear on the opposite side, some shims, and the opposite side clutch stack. As you can see, the same problem here. A little bit less than on the other side, but it's, it's starting to be the same problem as the opposite side. Trying to put it on the gear, a lot of movement, a lot of replay. This is not good at all. So, needs to be replaced. So, uh, if you forgot how the clutch stack was placed originally, no matter because our stack is a bit different, so. Here's what you should do. You have 
come closer just to, to check. You have here uh, two friction plates thicker than the other ones. It's uh, 2.6 millimeter, so two of them. One on the cap and one on the bell. So divide them like this. Here you have six, uh, six uh, regular clutch plates. So three on the right side, three on the left side. And here you have four outer disc uh, and do dog ear discs, someone calls them like that. So dog ear discs and or outer discs. Four on the right side, four on the left side and two spring plates, uh, pressure plates. One here and one there. So we begin first from the bell. As I said, oil it well before the assembly. And after that, you start the stack from a dog ear plate. So one dog ear plate goes on the bottom of the LSD housing or belt, whichever you want to call it. On the bottom. And then clutch plates. So the order is dog ear plate, clutch plate, dog ear plate, clutch plate. You finish the stack with a thick clutch plate and then spring plate over it like this. We're gonna fast forward this video right now not to lose time and then we'll finish it with a spring plate. So hope you got, got this. Make sure when, uh, when you start the assembly process, make sure you lubricate all parts, all friction surfaces with a limited slip differential oil. That is very important because if you assemble everything dry and clean, uh, before you get a chance to drive the car on the track, you will destroy differential because uh, oil cannot mix through all components so fast. So uh, lube it well use a limited slip differential oil exclusively and that's very important case. So one brush and uh, LSD oil and you're good to go. Put two plates like this. We use uh, we use two plates from the hydro press, just to have a hole for the for the shaft. So oil again on the spines inside. You need to make sure that all splines are correctly in their position inside. So when you take a look inside, you just make sure that uh, uh, sp uh, spider here is all the way down to its original edge. So that's important part. Continuing further with the spider gears, small spider gears or side gears, uh, as you want to call them oil as well and shim which on its original side and that's it for now from for the belt same procedure for this 
the steel cap as for the bell. Beginning the clutch stack with a door gear plate and finishing with a thick, thick friction plate. Those two holes need to be aligned because the bolt comes right through. So align them before you hammer the, the central pin inside. And that's it for the LSD unit. So, as you can see, all clutch plates are replaced with a brand new racing discs, reinforced clutch plates capable of holding 1000 horsepower on the racetrack. Unit is ready, assembled, and we are now going to put it back in the housing and then on the car. And that's about it. This LSD differential is now completely revealed and it is ready to be mounted on the car. Uh, just make sure, check if it's pinning correctly. This on the input shaft, everything is perfect and ready to be mounted on the car. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe if you like our content. Thank you.